Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is Mr. 30, Adam Crawford. You guys will know him from some other videos that I've had him on in the past, where I kind of smoked you for the most part. Eh? It happens from time to time, Clay. He's quiet. He's quiet. It's because he knows he's going to smoke me today because he's going to get about a 25 minute, 30 minute head start on me. We are fishing gorgeous Last Mountain Lake in search of a giant, giant walleye. The next couple of videos, that's literally what it's going to be about. I'm going to have Adam with me for a few days. I'm going to have a special guest. I'm going to have Carter with me. And yeah, today we're going to talk about in this video, like the title says, I'm going to give you like my five biggest tips to hunt a giant walleye. But I got to get set up here. Adam's going to start dropping down. Here, I'm gonna throw a head camera on just in case he hooks into something big as I'm getting set up, but yeah. Let's do it, buddy. Until I'm re ready to go, <laughs> I'm putting this in front of Adam. Adam, this Bring is now it. your show. Oh boy. Nail it. Pressure's on here. Yeah. I don't even have, I don't even have to fish this way. <laughs> it's way easier. Just give the camera to Adam. He'll, he'll catch <laughs> fish. Do you mix up nice coffees too for your guests? <laughs> Yeah, finicky bite coming in off the bottom, kind of hovering around. Rocking this little hyper hammer right now. Glow edition. Looks Perfect. Nice. Now when you miss the hooks that I got it on video. Well, I'm somewhat set up fishing. Adam managed to catch one little guy as I was getting set up. I do have a GoPro on his hole now. And then I have my head camera, the main camera, and then a flat or a camera on the mega live right now i'm using a giant giant rattle bait here which i will show off at some point hopefully it's going to score for me i'm on a go big or go home mission right now but don't let that fool you i'll be the first one to switch as soon as i have marks come in and not eat so tip number one how to catch a giant walleye first i want to just kind of put it for the record here that we just got out here. We might not catch a giant walleye today. And this video might just be about talking about catching giant walleye, even though we don't catch one. But your, my first tip is to put yourself in a location or body of water that has giant walleye in them. Saskatchewan, we got Last Mountain. We got Lake Diefenbaker. We got Tobin Lake. There's a few smaller bodies of water like the Coppell system, Crooked Lake, Round Lake. On the border of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, you have Lake of the Prairies. Of course, you've got Lake Winnipeg, Red River, all that stuff over there, right? Lake Manitoba is becoming a really good destination for, for big fish. The Red River, I think maybe I said that already. Pine, Pine Falls, all that stuff. Northern Manitoba. So first, you got to put yourself in a body of water that holds big fish. That's my number one tip for you in that sense. Yes, you can catch big walleye on smaller bodies of water that aren't known for big walleye, but to give yourself the best chance is obviously to put yourself in the best location possible. I think I'm going to downsize for now, but at some point in the next few days, I'm going to catch a big walleye on the Tantrum 100. Got some Cisco's moving through here. That's really cool to see. Huh. way cooler like to see all the ciscos all the bait compared to like a flasher when it's like just a solid marks hey this is neat holy cow big mark yeah got him uh yeah i don't think it's sorry little guy yeah it's the way he shot in i don't know you seem to really like that hyper hammer hyper hammer yeah huh i put it back on that's what a walleye looks like. <laughs> we hadn't anything crazy happen yet, but it's three o'clock. We're starting to get to be that prime time area. Adams put his shelter up, he managed to catch a decent fish in there, like a low 20 inch walleye. I'm going to just kind of move over a little bit more, just to give us a bit more room here and also pop up the otter. Cause as the sun starts to set, it's going to get a little bit cooler. And we want to fish into the dark for sure. Okay, well, we're all set up. We're fishing again. While I was getting everything set up here, Adam scored a decent fish. He said over there, like a mid 20 inch fish. So hopefully I have that on that GoPro there with his audio and all that fun stuff. But that'll lead me into tip number two to catch bigger giant walleye. And that's commitment, time out on the water. Don't expect just to roll out there right away just because you're on a body of water that holds big fish to score. You're gonna to have to put your time in. You're gonna to have to do your homework. You're gonna to have to do your research. You're gonna to have to go out there and figure it all out. Can you go out there and score right away? For sure you can. You can score a fish the first drop down. 
But then it could take you a week, it could take you a month, it could take you years in that sense to try to figure that body of water out. Or nonetheless, even, even if you know the body of water, you could spend days out there relearning it again because even some of these big bodies of water that I come to that I fished in the past and done well, things change year to year. So you're going to need some time out there, a little bit of a commitment. Obviously, a lot of these lakes have guides and outfitters and that's going to be one way to minimize some of that that time like Tobin Lake has a guide service Diefenbaker has a guide service Last Mountain has guide service Lake of the Prairies have guide services Lake Winnipeg you only have a little bit of time out there it definitely pays to hire a guide and so he can keep you or put you on big fish faster because he's out there every day kind of learning the, learning the water and figuring out figuring out what's happening Things change all the time. Day to day, they change, right? You could be on a hot bite one day and it could slowly peter out and you have to go find them again. Can you get lucky, like I said earlier, and roll to a spot and whack a big one right away? Of course you can. But most of it is commitment. The actual hours that guys spend out there that do well is absurd. It's And they're, and they're out there, they're drilling holes before the sun rises and they're fishing until the sun sets. It's commitment. You're out there all day long. Like I said, though, yes, you can get lucky and score instantly. But if you want to catch big fish, especially big fish consistently, you need to put the time in. It's it's a full-time commitment. Put a ring on it because you're in for the long haul. There's a mark on the left here. Come on. Here we go. Oh, yeah, big fish. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. That's big fish. That's big. I'm pretty sure it's big anyway. I saw him cruise on the left up on the rocks there. That's a nice fish. Come on, come on, come on. A little bit of a loose drag right now. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a good one. That's a good one. Just being patient. Being patient, waiting it out on an area I know that can be good. Oh, my boot's stuck. Come on, baby. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. I got a nice one on, Adam. Yeah, you want to bring your bump board over? Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, it's close. It's close. There we go. 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 Oh, oh. come on. Come on. Yes. That's a big girl right there. <laughs> Look at that. Hardly got that rattle bait right there. Big golden green. Oh, that felt good. It's literally like my first mark. Maybe touches 28, hey? 28 inch <laughs> unbelievable I can't even get it in the frame awesome golden fish beautiful fat one too well that is a fun way to start off my trip baby so good here I'll back up a little bit to get one shot here on the frame and then we'll send her home beautiful fish nice, fat one hey yeah, thanks buddy nice hardly out of the water at all Bam! This has been a hot rattle bait for me so far this year. The ta Tantrum 60, the Frosty Clownfish. Oh, I should not have kissed my bait. That's bad luck. So as I said, that literally, it's like the only mark I've had so far. Adam has had a couple fish though. That's kind of what kept us in this area right now. And it's an area that I and he, we both have some confidence in. So when it got to be the prime time, we decided to just kind of stick it out right here set up and wait them out that will lead me into tip number three for giant walleyes big walleyes that that was a big walleye that wasn't a giant that was a big walleye though 28 inches around that probably between nine to ten pounds it was a big fat one healthy healthy fish golden golden fish but anyways tip three good equipment sometimes you're not going to have a lot of opportunities or a lot of chances so you want to make the most out of that one bite that you might get that whole day or maybe that one bite all week is going to be that big fish a good rod a good reel with a good drag good line good fluorocarbon leader a good hook sharp hooks good equipment the rod that i'm using right now is a 38 inch medium from frostbite it's called the true grit it's been a favorite of mine for walleye for a long time i know it handles the big fish I'm very happy with it in the terms of the action that it has. It loads far, far enough into the blank to absorb the head shakes, but also has enough power to set the hook. You saw that fish just had one treble in the top of his mouth. He hardly, hardly had it. Two, 
too 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 stiff of a rod say a rod with like a really fast action where it's really powerful into here and then bends just at the tip you're not going to be able to absorb a lot of those head shakes and you're going to pull pull more hooks so a good rod to a rod to absorb those head shakes the true grit the smoke show the rods that i've used in some other videos the drench the the running gun if you're going to fish outside lots i love the 50 inch running gun just not in this shelter i'll fish with it in my hub shelters but not in my flip over shelter good line this is suffix 832 uh braid ice braid sorry just been using it this year so far been super happy with it a good fluorocarbon leader i'm using suffix eight pound fluorocarbon advanced i might have missed the the mess the wording up there but it's fluorocarbon or advanced fluorocarbon i believe it is suffix advanced fluorocarbon on this rod i'm running eight pound both eight pound ice braid and eight pound floral leader on the smoke show, I'm running six and six. I always match my line to my bait. Got another Mark cruising in right here. And then as far as hooks go, like I said, I'm on a, the Tantrum 60 right now, a Frosty Clownfish. It's got sharp, sharp hooks, which I really, really like. I think this is just a, uh, a Cisco. Cisco or a smaller walleye. But good equipment. You're not going to have a lot of chances, so you want to make the most out of it. Got a little guy here. What's that? Uh, I just got a little guy here. Little baby. Good fish for you. Huh? It's a good fish for you. <laughs> it's very small. Very cute. Come on. I it's just a little Cisco. We're just cruising through. I've got lots of bait moving through here. Some individual marks, some big schools of fish. And you can usually just tell by the bait the way it's it's moving just straight through, not stopping to look at your lure at all. Not that walleye won't do that as well, but I was hoping to catch another fish here to talk about point four because it is getting pretty late, but hopefully we catch another one yet when we talk about tip five, said point. So let's cover tip four right now. Tip four would be understanding the fish and understanding that lake. Is it a good morning bite? Is it a good evening bite? Is it a strong afternoon bite? Sometimes you catch your biggest fish in the afternoons. River systems, a lot of times you'll catch big fish in the afternoons. Not to say you're not gonna catch them in the morning or in the evenings and that kind of thing. So you want to kind of like learn how that lake operates. Should you be going somewhere really, really early, setting up fishing for two hours and then moving around looking for more fish and then setting yourself up for the evening. Generally, most of the lakes, I kind of camp out in an area for sure for the morning bite and then it may be an area for the afternoon bite. Lots of times with the whole filming stuff, I will camp out all day, but you have to learn, learn how to read the fish on that lake in terms of where they're gonna be. Obviously, you're not always gonna know where they're always gonna be or else it would just make it that much simpler understanding what they like to eat down there do they eat crayfish do they eat minnows how do you learn all that it's just all experience and time on that body of water but tip four would definitely be understanding your fish understanding the lake as well like river systems are, are different than than lakes lakes you fish a lot of structure close to deep water river systems maybe you'll set up on a river channel or on a flat just off of the river channel something like that and everything can be completely backwards, right? It's all going to come down to experience and time on the water or the ice in this in this situation, and just learning the whole the whole ecosystem, the whole structure of it. You'll you'll notice patterns sometimes, right? Where you'll have certain areas will be good in the mornings and certain areas will be good in the afternoons. And yeah, you might think you figure it out, and the next year it'll you'll go and it'll be something completely different, but. The more you can develop those patterns and put together some kind of, of game plan, you, you tend to have some better success, if that makes sense. Now, keep all this in mind. It's fishing, and these fish can do weird things, and just when you do think you have them figured out, they'll do something completely different. But, like I said, tip four, just understanding the lake, how it works, and understanding the fish. Maybe those fish at one lake like to eat big meals, whereas maybe another lake they like to eat small meals. And that honestly only comes with experience. Hate to say it, but to catch big fish in general, it's mostly just experience and time on the water or ice. Well, as you can see, it is dark, dark. Adam is right there. You can see his, his light. I was gonna do this outside, but it's a little bit cool. I'm gonna step back inside. And sadly, no more fish, 
but we'll talk about tip five real quick. I know this is a pretty boring video in terms of fish, fish catches, but hey, it's gonna be a short video with some tips and one decent walleye. For sure, that's just the way it goes sometimes, but it's still, still fishing, but it's just not really happening. So much bait closing, <laughs> closing, cruising through, but the fish just are not cooperating or the walleye aren't anyway. I have not seen many walleye come through. I think I've had, honestly, one walleye mark so far. And that's the one I caught. So tip five, and this isn't so much as a tip as it's more of a, a message. And no, it's a tip because it's something that can help you and of course, everybody else in the future. And that is taking care of the resource. If you catch a 28 inch walleye and treat it poorly and it dies or you keep it in that sense, somebody else doesn't get to catch that fish. If you catch a 31 inch walleye or 32 inch walleye, there's a really, really good chance that somebody caught it when it was 27, somebody caught it when it was 28, 29 and 30, and they all took really good care of it so you could catch it. So I think that's something that's anglers that everybody should work together to take really good care of that resource so other people can experience that as well. So that obviously goes in terms of like following the rules if your lake is barbless in that sense, fish barbless. If you are required to release the fish, obviously release the fish. But I still feel that even if you say are allowed to keep one fish, say over 28 inches, it's probably better to put that fish back anyway. It's, for, it's better for the breeding stock in that sense. So if you manage the manage if we manage the fisheries together as people and take care of the fisheries, it's going to be better for everybody else. Don't keep them outside too long. Don't freeze their eyes, their gills. Limit your photos. Like if you got a pile of fish photos with 26, 27 inch fish, let a 26 or 27 inch fish go quick without having to take that photo. Eventually you end up with all these fish photos and they all look the same. Yes, if you catch uh, your personal your personal best, take a photo of it, right? But put it in the water, take it out, do a nice photo, put it back, hold it in the water, make sure your photo is good in that sense, and then put it, put the fish back, release it back. But limit their time out of water. Like I say, don't freeze their eyes, their gills. Generally, if it's too cold outside for you to fish, it's too cold for the fish. Taking pictures in the shack is perfectly fine. If you're fishing in the shack and it's minus 30 and you run outside to take a picture with that with the fish because it looks better outside you're probably doing that fish some harm and i know people are going to say just mind your own business clayton no we as anglers have to take care of the resource because if you want to catch a 33 inch walleye you have to manage a 32 inch or a 30 inch or a 28 inch or even a 25 inch in that sense so yeah on that note I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Big tour to come yet. And don't forget, get outside.